Hello everybody, I am Jared Rossagini, vlogger, and on today's video, we will be talking about the newest DNA tool on GEDmatch. Now technically this is really just a really advanced version of an already existing tool, but we'll get into that. Less than a year ago, I released a video about DNA tools that I would like to see implemented by DNA databases. During that time, I was consulting EJ Blum in the development of a tool which implemented some of the ideas I talked about in my video. EJ Blum is a genealogist and scientist based in the Netherlands who developed the AutoCluster tool something which has become a vital tool for many genetic genealogists. The AutoCluster tool takes a person's DNA matches and then clusters them together based on people matching each other, making it so each cluster represents a specific branch of the family. But the AutoCluster tool has a problem. People with certain types of ancestry won't be able to utilize the tool, such as Jewish populations, French Canadians, and more. The issue is that these populations have a history of endogamy. The practice of people from a certain population group only having children with others from that same population group. When this happens for many generations, the descendants of those population groups end up all being related to each other, many times in distant multiple ways. Making it so the auto cluster results become useless because it creates one big blob of a cluster because everybody is a shared match. A year ago, EJ reached out to me about developing the auto cluster tool to be able to work for endogamous populations. I accepted and we began to discuss how to make the tool work for these population groups. And after a lot of trial runs and small tweaks, the tool is now live for all GEDmatch tier one members. The auto cluster endogamy tool works very similar to the original auto cluster tool, although it now takes into account more filtering options, which are based on genetic genealogy techniques used in endogamous genetic genealogy. The first big new option is setting a minimum average segment size filter, something I honestly wish was also available for filtering on the one to many list. Jedmatch Kaijen, I know you're watching, but average segment size is one of the most common techniques used for endogamous genetic genealogy. This idea is based on the fact that being a descendant of a endogamous population means that you're going to be distantly related in many ways to everyone else who's part of that same population group. And the more distantly related you are to someone, the smaller the DNA is that you're likely to share with them. So with distant relations, you'll usually see smaller and smaller segments. This means that when we're looking at DNA matches for someone from an endogamous population, we're going to see matches that aren't going to be genealogically useful because they're only related in these many distant ways, meaning that they're going to have a lot of small segments adding up to a larger total amount of shared DNA. But when we look at matches who have a lot closer of a recent common ancestry, then they're going to share a lot larger segments. So an average segment size filter helps filter out all of the matches who are only matching because of lots of shared distant ancestry due to endogamy, and then leaving behind the matches who would likely have a much closer ancestry. So basically it leaves matches which have a higher likelihood of being genealogically useful. Using this same concept of segments, the next new option is a minimum largest segment. While this is not a new type of filter for matchless, the expanded option of indicating the number of largest segments is a very new concept for genetic genealogy filtering. One thing I've even mentioned to EJ as a possible expansion to this is indicating a largest segment and a second largest segment. So maybe we'll see something like that roll out in the future. Either way, I'm really excited for other genetic genealogists to be able to utilize this option and see if there may be unexpectedly helpful ways to make use of it. Now, the biggest addition to this new advanced auto cluster is the shared match filtering section. Since everyone within an endogamous population is related to everyone else within that same population group, they all end up showing up in each other's shared match lists. So this option then focuses on how much DNA the shared matches are sharing with each other. This is based on the technique using advanced shared match lists to see how much you match each match, as well as how much the shared matches match each other. The technique is to find the shared matches who have a significant amount of shared DNA with both you and your match. 
This shared match filtering section uses the same filters as the primary match filtering, minimum average segment size and largest segment, although it also has the option to set a minimum shared centimorgan amount for the shared matches. There are a few preset options to choose because how endogamy affects DNA matching can vary between different endogamous population groups. So we set these results based on what we had seen so far in the results from various population groups. The default is the not endogamous option, which has similar settings to the regular auto cluster tool, although it takes into account the average segment size of eight centimorgans. The somewhat endogamous preset ups the minimum shared centimorgan between shared matches to 20 centimorgans and may be most useful for people where endogamy only has light effects on DNA results, such as those from colonial American population groups. Next is the endogamous preset, which brings the minimum average segment size up to 10 centimorgans and the minimum largest segment to 20 centimorgans. For shared match filtering, the minimum shared centimorgan between shared matches goes up to 40. These settings are geared towards populations with strong DNA issues from endogamy, such as Jewish and Akkadian ancestry. Last is the highly endogamous preset, which really ramps things up. The minimum average segment size is increased to 20 centimorgans, minimum largest segment is increased to 30 centimorgans with two largest segment requirements. These are replicated also in the shared match filtering section, along with a 60 centimorgan minimum of shared DNA between shared matches. This preset is designed for population groups where the endogamy is much stronger and causes more issues for DNA testing, such as Islander populations and Louisiana Cajuns. Now these presets are not required, you can adjust the options manually, and I urge genetic genealogists to play around with these settings to see if they can find anything that might be really useful. I'm hopeful that as more people utilize the tool, we'll be able to figure out specific specific presets that may be useful to specific population groups because the way endogamy affects DNA varies so much. And if you'd like to learn a bit more about endogamy and its effects on DNA testing, be sure to check out this video tutorial I made a few years ago. Thank you to my Patreon patrons and YouTube members.